It's like we're live, Clay Newcomb. You hear me, buddy? Hey, Ben. Here we are. Uh, day two of the rendezvous. Thanks for everybody for yesterday. Yesterday was an awesome opening, a uh, bunch of great seminars, good storytelling. And now we're back for night number two. So I'm excited, Clay. You ready to go? I'm ready to go, man. This man should have brought my coonskin cap. <laughs> I, well, I did not. I'm not at the global headquarters, so I'm kind of out of pocket here. Yeah, you told me you had uh, to go. I would have had all kind of paraphernalia. You had to go into the city to get city internet, didn't you? Yeah, this I had to get some city internet. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, we won't. I won't stay on here too long, man. People came to see you, but before we do anything, we want to thank First Light. They're a Platinum Plus sponsor of BHA. I have close ties to them. So do you. Great people down there mm -hmm. um, in Ketchum, Idaho. Love the brand. We love what they do. We love that they round up for conservation with all of the purchases on FirstLight.com. So. Thank you so much to everybody at First Light for being a part of this, supporting us personally and BHA. Um, a huge thank you to those guys. And we're going to be giving – there's a door prize of a Wick hoodie, a First Light trucker hat. We're going to be giving that away at the end, so everybody stick around. Somebody in the live stream is going to win that door prize, so stick around for that. Um, but for those of you that don't know Clay, I hope you all know Clay. If you don't know Clay, uh, he's a pure badass, man. He's um, – He's a backwoodsman's backwoodsman. He owns some flashy mules, which I'm sure he'll get into this bear hunting seminar. Right. He actually is the owner and editor of Bear Hunting Magazine. He's on the First Light Pro team. He's an Arkansas BHA member, uh, a good friend of mine, one of the best voices for conservation out there. You're going to learn a lot from him today. So give it up for Clay Newcomb. Virtual. I'm hey, the guys. Clapping. Hey, what a... It's cool to be here. Cool to be at the virtual rendezvous. You know, I I went to the run the the actual rendezvous a couple of years ago, two years ago in Boise, and that was one of my first exposures to BHA. And I had a, the same experience that I've heard a lot of other people say that they had when they when they were at the rendezvous. Is that I came away saying, hey these are my kind of people, you know? And, uh, I think it's always interesting to, uh, you know, I, you hear all this green decoy stuff, which I have heard. And I walked through that. I was like, okay, I'm going to check these guys out. And here I am still today, a member of BHA. And I just see incredible things that they're doing. I see an incredible ability to motivate people and to motivate a, an audience of people that is unique to the hunting world and a bunch of the great hunters that I know and guys that have a value system like mine are members of this organization. And, uh, so, Hey, I'm, I'm proud to be a BHA guy and, um, Hey, it's, it's, uh, it's exciting to be here. We're going to, we're going to jump right in to talking about hunting black bears in the eastern deciduous forest and that's specifically what this is 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 dealing with and uh, i'm gonna share my screen with you guys so that you can see a powerpoint that i've got and i believe that you're going to be able to see me and the powerpoint give me just one second here to get this right all right i think that should work great um, as we go through this, if you guys have questions, there's a question tab down here that you can, you can, you can put a question in. I may not get to it right away, but at the end, we're going to go for a while here. And then at the end of this, I'm going to try to answer some of these questions. But if you've never heard the phrase sheep hunt of the South, um, number one, you hadn't listened to the bear hunting magazine podcast. And number two, it's a pretty deep metaphor that uh, you kind of got to be in the know to understand where this thing is going. But basically, this is a phrase that we have coined to, des to describe bear hunting in the eastern deciduous forest, still hunting in the eastern deciduous forest without bait or hounds, which uh, I'm going to talk about that as well, both noble, honorable pursuits. Um, still hunting is a phrase that I've chosen to use because most people are familiar with that term. However, I actually like to call it something different. So 
as we dive into this, I want to define what we're talking about. So we're talking about still or slip hunting. I think a better description of the way that I hunt the eastern deciduous forest for bear is to call it slip hunting because I actually prefer not to hunt out of a tree stand and I, I move a lot. And so I call it slip hunting or sheep hunt of the south definition could also be tree stand hunting the eastern deciduous forest for black bear for everybody that you know most of you guys probably would be familiar with what i mean when i say the eastern deciduous forest basically from about probably 300 miles west of the mississippi river all the way back across you know arkansas tennessee north carolina all the way to the atlantic ocean from Florida all the way up to Maine is the Eastern deciduous forest. It's typically a hardwood forest. And that is the historic like El Primo range of Ursus Americanus, the black bear. And typically the way that guys have hunted these areas has been with hounds and uh, using bait in certain places, certain States that allow it. And they do that because the eastern deciduous forest is thick, super thick, high bear densities for, for the most part. And so bear managers have needed ways to manage bears. And the truth is that the sheep hunt of the south, hunting these bears, still hunting, slip hunting, tree stand hunting, is extremely difficult. And bear managers have needed different ways to manage bears. Because as we all know, large carnivores with expanding populations, which is what we have in the eastern deciduous forest almost everywhere. And that's a that's a massively good thing for conservation. It's a good thing for us is that bears, black bears are thriving. Whatever's happening ecologically across North America has been massively beneficial for black bear. And so, but this method of hunting is is tough. It's it it takes uh it takes a lot of different uh components to be successful. So we're going to dive into it again. We're just defining what it is. So black bears are low density animals, and this is a difficult and low odds hunt. And it's compounded by the low visibility of the, of the Eastern deciduous forest. I want to say a few things about this kind of hunt is you, it, it, you can't be validated by seeing game. You know, I love to hunt the West. I just, I got back from Montana a few weeks ago. It's incredible to be in a place where you can see miles around and you can see game in a lot of different places um, a lot of you western guys have that liberty and that's a lot of fun can't do that here um, so you can't be validated by seeing game and the mental toughness needed for this kind of hunt i believe will make you a better hunter in other areas that you hunt other places just because it takes a, a certain toughness you may go you may go a season without seeing a bear me i will i i, I think it was 2018 i went an entire season in arkansas and oklahoma uh without seeing a bear hunting in this manner so let's talk about why i'm calling it the sheep hunt of the south if you haven't heard that before you've never heard me talk about it i'd be interested if you caught the metaphor before i say this why the sheep hunt metaphor well sheep hunters think they're so special and tough yeah you heard it you heard it from you heard it from me you heard it coming from arkansas Sheep hunters think they're so special and tough. Big smiley face. And I think that uh, the low odds nature of a sheep hunt stacked up with the difficulty is we started calling this the sheep hunt of the South. And because it requires intense physical fitness, man, these mountains, especially in uh, North Georgia, Arkansas, East Tennessee, Western North Carolina, the Virginias, man, oh man, you, you got to be tough to hunt those mountains. It requires extreme physical fitness, mental toughness. You're not going to be seeing game every day. You cannot be validated by seeing game. And you've got to have an intimate knowledge of the terrain and bears to be successful. And this is what I always say. And the good thing about this is it'll never be able to be validated. So I can say whatever I want and nobody can disprove me or prove me. But if you turn 10 sheep hunters loose in good sheep country and you turn 10 bear hunters loose in North Georgia or in Arkansas, here in the Ozarks, um, I think the sheep hunters would kill more game than the bear hunters. It's a tough hunt. 
tough hunt. Pretty much the way that I started hunting this way, or the reason that I started hunting this way, is nobody that I knew was consistently harvesting bears just here in Arkansas on purpose. Now, granted, our rifle deer season overlaps our bear season. And if you've got a Arkansas hunting license, you've got a bear tag as well. So every rifle hunter in Arkansas during the November deer season had a bear tag in their pocket. So guys were harvesting bears, but very, very few people were doing it on purpose. And there were a few though. And I, I, I talked with those guys and I mined information from them and, uh, and still it, it, people just did not pursue that as a thing that they wanted to do. Well, in 2013, I decided that I was going to kill a bear in the national forest on purpose. That was the way I described it. And, uh, I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself. I talk about this in the PowerPoint, but I, I think it fits here. In 2013, well, it was several years leading up to that that I'd hunted that way. But in 2013, I got serious and uh, and I logged about 33 miles in the National Forest in Arkansas and finally killed a bear on the last day of the Arkansas bear season. And it was a it was a 450 plus pound color phase bear killed on the last day National Forest. And uh, it was one of the most Well, to this day, I I do not know that I'll ever harvest another animal that I'm more proud of than that animal. And, uh, and so I said, okay, if I can do it once, I bet I can do it again. And I started to kind of develop a strategy for how to hunt these bears. And, uh, I've got a system that works for me. And the, the cool thing is, is that it'll work for you wherever you're hunting and the What we'll learn as we talk about bears is Montana bears are just like Arkansas bears. They're bears. Now, they're using the landscape different. They're eating different stuff, but they're basically utilizing food, utilizing safety and cover, the breeding patterns. Everything's the same. So, you know, some of the principles that we'll talk about here, you can you can use anywhere. But specifically, anything coming out of here could be used in. uh in any of the states that I'm that I've already talked about, we're going to look at a map here in just a minute. Um, oh yeah, sheep hunting the South metaphor also falls into the Southern inferiority complex. Uh, if you're from the South, you should know this. It's kind of like uh, learning that you've got like a, you know, a member of your family that you didn't realize was there. Um, but for a long time, it's kind of a sociological issue with those of us in the south uh, we kind of have an inferior or inferiority complex and so i think that's why i uh, love dog and the sheep hunters all right the 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 elite of the hunting industry all right i hope y'all know i'm kidding um all right rant this is this rant's optional i put option on here because i may or may not do it um i tell you what i'm coming back to the rant i'm coming back to the rant we're moving we're going to move through the rant and we're gonna we're gonna get started right here. Um, we'll come back to the rant. You're gonna want to hear the rant. All right. So where where are the bears that we're talking about? So where are the huntable bears in the east? Arkansas, Oklahoma, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, West Virginia, Kentucky has a limited bear season. And then if we're if we're out of the south and we're moving into the northeast, Pennsylvania, New York, New Hampshire, Vermont. Maine, and then uh, Missouri is seriously considering having a bear season, which would have been included in the, in the could have been included in the southern states. Um, that is a massive win for conservation. Uh, Missouri's taking public comment right now about about a potential bear season in Missouri, which is big news. So all these states have a lot of public land, and that's typically where you find bears. That's the cool thing about bears, is that bears want unfragmented wilderness wilderness with a lowercase w they that's the kind of places they want you know if you're hunting trophy whitetails if you're trying to kill a 200 inch whitetail typically public land is not always going to be your go-to place if that if you understand what i'm saying but if you're trying to harvest black bears public land is your go-to place i think that's cool so where to find bears in these states we're going to go into this a lot more but Usually, I just want you to have a framework for for where these bears are. Usually, in all these states, 
the bears, the, the, the core bear populations are going to be in the vast, un, unfragmented blocks of wilderness with a lowercase w. Um, searching statewide harvest by county to find where the bears are is essential. Like if you live in Georgia right now, you didn't know there were bears there, and you're like, how do I get started hunting bears? And you asked me, Clay, where should I hunt in Georgia? I would say, man, about five clicks away on your computer, you'll be able to know where the core bear areas in your state are. And then from there, you go in and find the public land, find big un unfragmented tracts of lands in the counties with a high harvest. Now, there's some quirks in there too, because sometimes if a public area is near a large city, near a large population center, you can, uh, you know, sometimes just the amount of people going to public land skew the harvest a little bit, but you'll begin to understand where these bears are. So this is just a rough map that I did here, but you'll see kind of this island of bears in the, in the, in the mid South in Arkansas, in, uh, Eastern Oklahoma, and then in Southern Missouri. And then you go on over and, uh, Florida's full of bears, but right now there's no bear season in Georgia. Um, I mean, excuse me, in Florida, there's, there's, there's public comment and uh, a lot going on down there, but, but East Tennessee, South Carolina, North Carolina, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, all the way up into Maine. That's where these bears are. Okay. And uh, all right. Hey, if you're going to be a bear hunter, you got to know a little bit about this animal. Um, the, the general knowledge that is in the hunting community right now that about whitetail deer, let's say, is vastly higher than what it was 20 years ago when I was a kid. I would say like the average whitetail enthusiast probably knows more about the biology of whitetail deer today than the expert did in the late 80s. Well, what I've found about bears is that people generally don't really know much about bears. So if you're trying to make sense of becoming a bear hunter, and especially in this way, in, in, a, in, a, in a still hunting, slip hunting way, you're going to have to, it's going to help for you to understand the big picture of what's going on. So you need to understand some of this stuff. So bears are opportunistic omnivores. We all know that. But in the fall, they'll be keying in on hard mast. Much more on this coming. A bear's diet is 85% plant matter and about 15% animal protein. That's research that came out of Arkansas. And uh, I find that to be true pretty much everywhere. Some of the coastal bears that way up north are eating more uh, animal protein through fish and different things. But of the 15%, most of that is insects. Bears are prolific grubbers and ant eaters. The actual research that came out of Arkansas, I want to say like 80% of that 15% was, was ants. They hammer the ants. Um, if you'll notice for a second, that is basically the equivalent of the diet of a wild turkey. So for people that have questions about whether you can eat a bear or whether you shouldn't, think about that. Use that one on your buddies. A black bear in the eastern deciduous forest, essentially has the diet of a wild turkey. And uh, I don't really talk much about meat inside of this, but uh, black bear meat is incredible. And anybody that says different either doesn't like good red meat or they've had it butchered in some way, uh, it's great stuff. It truly is. And it's truly in a, a backwoodsman, frontiersman, American red meat, man. I mean, the research, the literature here in Arkansas that talks about uh, these guys coming into Arkansas in the early 1800s, these pioneers, frontiersmen, backwoodsmen. Um, if you had red meat, it was a real good chance it was black bear. Um, you know, Daniel Boone, all this history, Davy Crockett, you know, Daniel Boone, I think he killed 155 bears on the Sandy River in Kentucky one winter. Um, we got a lot of history with black bears, and that's what makes them such a icon of North American wilderness. And to me, part of the reason that I grew to love bears, I didn't grow up hunting them. Uh, we had them where I lived, but I did not, uh, we didn't hunt them because the, the population was growing. And finally, when I kind of came of age to start hunting on my own, we had this robust bear population. And I was, I was shocked that 
people didn't hunters didn't didn't show more you know hat tip respect to the bear as a game animal as a as table fare and i mean i just felt like i just woke up one day and i was the first person in arkansas that loved bears that's not true i don't want to hurt anybody from there were other people but it was just like wait a minute this is a world class wildlife resource what an incredible beast what a what what a cool thing to be able to hunt this animal right here in my home state and that's what got me going in in bear hunting uh you, you need to know something about bear breeding bear breeding takes place in the spring and summer so you aren't hunting any type of rut in the fall in all of these states are fall hunting all the eastern eastern forest uh eastern deciduous forest states except for a couple of tribal lands in maine there's a few tribal lands uh up in maine where they hunt in the spring but this makes it vastly different than deer hunting. You can't come into this hunt with a deer hunting mentality. Uh, peak bear breeding dates are usually around mid-June. and uh, But the bear breeding window is really long. It's, uh, it's up to three months. And bears can actually breed almost any time of the year when they're awake. But typically breeding is going to take place from May to July, peaking in mid-June. That's just some information you need. Fall hyperphagy. That's a term. Take that home. Take it to uh, your buddies. Impress them. Hyperphagy describes the feeding frenzy of a bear in preparation for winter denning. So that's what we're capitalizing on as hunters in the fall is that these bears are trying to pack in a ton of groceries. I mean, these bears, the pinnacle of their biological caloric intake for the entire year happens in the fall with hard mast. Okay. Eastern deciduous forest, classic for white oak, hickory, red oak, beech. Um, all this hard mast is just, you know, the, the a white oak acorn is the chicken nugget of the eastern deciduous forest, full of calories, full of nutrients. It's what these bears, their whole year revolves around this. That's what we're capitalizing on inside of this type of hunting is their fall hyperphagy, which uh, they say that bears can forage up to 20 hours a day during this time period. Um, and I'll give some examples of, of, of when I'm hunting here. Uh, bear range, man, this is incredible stuff. And, and this is a big generalization, okay? Every place is a little bit different. Um, but here in Arkansas, uh, the average sow bear would probably have an eight to 12 mile square range. Uh, a boar would have a 15 to 20 mile square range. That being said, a, a male black bear, there was a male black bear that was tagged in uh, the central Ozarks, and it was killed on Interstate 40 near Salisaw, Oklahoma, 156 miles away. You know, we have this kind of research. Uh, there's a bear right now up in uh, Missouri that traveled from Springfield, to Missouri, to dang near St. Louis, which is a couple hundred miles. You know, it's a, it's a GPS collared bear. So these bears range out really far but they typically are going to have a home range in the realm of this and this is part of what makes this hunt difficult you're, if you're trying to hunt a white-tailed deer you're hunting an animal that you know has a you know does can have a, a, a pretty small home range and the buck can have a couple square miles that he's living in but uh again this is just biology stuff that i think you need to know but they you but this is key right here is that they utilize different parts of their ranges in the spring, summer, and fall based upon food availability and breeding. So I have people all the time say, hey man, I'm getting a picture of a big bear on a trail camera and it's June. Is that bear going to be here in September and October when it's hunting season? And I always say, maybe, maybe not. I mean, these bears utilize different parts of their range based upon food availability and typically these bears are going to have summer and fall ranges that are quite different because in the summer they're capitalizing capitalizing on a whole different network of soft mass they're eating berries they're eating blueberries they're eating raspberries they're eating blackberries they're eating pawpaws they're eating all kind of fruit and all the different things you know the wild cherries and uh lots of different soft mass all across um so you know, this just kind of gives you a, a, an idea of what you're up against. Okay, transitioning now to getting started. Let's say you're like, man, I'm going to hunt a bear this fall. How do I get started? Well, let's talk about how bears use the terrain. 
as hunters, we've absolutely got to understand how animals use the mountains, the areas that we're hunting. Bears use mountainous terrain just like white-tailed deer and other game. If you've hunted the mountains at all, these five, six things right here are going to be transfer right into bears. Saddles or gaps and ridges and mountains. That you know, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. But if you've got a if you've got a high ridge and there's a low swag in that ridge, a lot of times you'll find game travels through that. You'll find buck sign in there. Well, you might find some big high saddles um, that have some acorns in them, or you might find big high saddles that have game trails. You might find some bear scat in those game trails. Bears use that. Heads of hollows. Uh, I know in the Appalachian Mountains, in the Ozarks, Washtals, um, a head of a hollow, for those of you who wouldn't know what that would be, a hollow would just be a, a big drainage. And where the two ridges that, that flank that drainage meet on the side of that mountain is going to be the head of a hollow. And there'll be game trails at the heads of those hollows where rather than an animal going all the way down the valley and all the way back up, he's going to head that hollow. Benches, fingers, and ridge tops. Basically, if you were just taking off through the mountains trying to find the the, the uh, least path of resistance, that you would walk down benches, you'd walk down fingers, you'd walk down ridge tops, waterways or travel corridors, you know, drainages, river drainages, creeks. Um, but when we're talking about terrain, thick vegetation, bears, bears are extremely secretive animals. Um, you could go your whole life in good bear country and never see a bear. Blows my mind. Um, in living in Arkansas in good bear country, if I hadn't sought out to pursue bears, I would say that I probably would have seen five or six bears just totally on accident living in good bear country. They are, like I said at the beginning, they're a low density animal. And what that means is, you know, a deer would be like a high density animal. High deer population might be between 30 and 45 deer per square mile. A high bear density might be one bear per square mile. And that's good bear bear density. So, you, you know, you're, you're just not going to see them. You're not going to see them jumping the road very much. You're not going to see them, you know, you're not going to see six or eight bears in the back corner of a field. You know, it, you're just not going to see them. But they utilize thick cover. They they don't want to be disturbed. They want to stay away from, from humans at all costs, usually, usually. Some of these bears are now getting into more populated areas. Okay, how to hunt. Uh, so now we're transitioning. In, you know, we've told you where to hunt. We've talked about bear biology. We've talked about um, how bears use the mountains, how they travel. Now let's talk about what they eat. Because if you remember, that is absolutely what we're capitalizing on in the fall. We're not. There's no rut. You can't grunt call in a bear in the fall. You can't rattle one in. You can't use any kind of sexual attractant during this time. They're not interested. They're interested in eating. So I hunt bears over food source. And I think this is important because sometimes when you're just trying to grab hold of an idea to get a foothold into something to know how to get started, you need to hear somebody say that. Nobody ever said that to me, even though maybe it's intuitive, maybe it's not, but it helps to say it. I hunt bears over food source. I don't care where they're traveling, even though I've told you where they do travel. I don't care where they're bedding. I want to know where they're eating. And here's why. Because bears leave a ton of sign where they're eating. Bears are easily stalkable when they're feeding. And they spent a large amount of time in feeding areas in the fall. Remember, fall hyperphagy means that they're they're just gorging themselves. They're spending a lot of time in these feeding areas. Um, Bears are going to, in, in, in places where there's a lot of bears, you know, using a, like say a white oak flat or a bench that's covered in white oak acorns, man, you're going to find bear trails. You're going to find bear scat. And uh, this was a question that I did not know the answer to. I just kind of figured it out on my own is that, you know, I'm hunting these bears on the ground with a bow in early October in Arkansas, which is very hot, very dry. I mean, you can't stalk. You can't, you can't walk without crunching the leaves. And before I had done this, I was like, man, if I see a bear out there at 50 yards, 
and need to close the distance to 20, 25, you know, am I going to be able to do it? Well, what I learned is that when a bear has his head in whatever he's eaten, he is very easy to stalk. And I mean, I'm pretty sure one of the first bears that ever killed like this, I could have walked up and slapped him on the butt. Um, it doesn't mean they're easy to kill. They're very difficult to kill, but the difficulty is finding them. Once you find them, you can kill them. Um, so I hunt food source where there are white oak acorns. And I want to, uh, I want to help you guys learn to pronounce the word acorn. It is pronounced a kern, um, not a corn. Um, so this will be a a bear's preferred food source. So, uh, early season, this, this is a big tip. Okay. Early season before the acorns fall, you'll find bears climbing oaks to eat acorns. I don't know. Some of you guys would know it, but a black bear can climb a tree like a squirrel. And I'm being serious. A big one can. And, uh, the best time that I've had hunting bears in this manner has been in the early season. And, uh, bears will be climbing trees and when they're climbing trees it basically turns into a squirrel hunt because you can hear them because they make a racket climbing a tree they make lots of sign because they break out branches they i have i could it, it almost sounds like you hear somebody say this you almost wouldn't believe them but i mean i have seen flats that Literally, you would have thought an ice storm had come through there and destroyed the trees, knocking out limbs. Um, and it was bears climbing up those trees, breaking the limbs. And man, let me tell you something. I'll tell you the place to kill a bear is when he's up a tree. Yep, you heard it. You heard it from here when he's up a tree. Um, I, I actually have never done that before. I tried to uh, a couple of years ago. I found a bunch of bear sign first time I'd been in there I kind of sat down to catch my breath after I pulled this big ridge and I was sitting there and all of a sudden I heard what sounded like a 200 pound squirrel scampering up a tree about 50 yards from me and I look over and there's a black bear going up a white oak and man I gathered up my bow and just took out right towards him and uh, I was just going to get up under the tree and uh he, he came down before I could get over there but a lot of guys in Georgia hunt that way. Um, I I know a guy. Well, we published an article in Barony Magazine. Um, I know a guy over there that saw 18 bears in the same day in North Georgia hunting white oaks. A lot of them were in trees early season. So, man, there, there's your tip right there. Uh, hard mast. What's hard mast? Um, this is probably not an exhaustive list, but white oak, red oak, hickory nuts, beech nuts, uh, chinkapin, uh, used to, there were a lot of chinkapins in the Appalachians. They're pretty much gone, but, uh, there's a, maybe a few places where there's some chinkapin or chestnut. Um, that that's all great hard mast, um, beech nuts. We have in Arkansas and I know in other places in the Appalachians, they have beech trees. And when the beech nuts make the game really keys in, on beach and beach is also real big up in north and in uh new york new hampshire vermont maine those guys have more beach than they do oaks uh, fall soft mass now this is important to know too the uh the mvp of the fall soft mass for me here in arkansas is black gum you look it up if you don't know what it is it produces a little bitty uh berry about as big around as the end of your pinky it looks like a raisin and a uh, lot of game eats black gum. Black gums, when they make, they make really well. And usually it's just a single tree. They don't really grow in groves. But uh, black gum, persimmon, pawpaw, wild apples in some places. We don't really have that in Arkansas, but I hear people talk about that. Wild plum, uh, dogwood berries. You're not going to really key in on those for bear, but they're there. And some people hunt bears in the fall over agricultural areas i got a buddy in georgia that plants a bunch of sweet corn and uh the bears in the fall come down into a sweet corn. i mean like a big ag area of sweet corn that borders national forest and uh they actually kill bears coming down into that sweet corn so there are places where there's commercial agriculture near some of these areas okay 
All right. How to hunt. So hunting bears over food source. So now you've located bears and, and you know, how, how are you going to hunt them? What are you going to do? Um, by observing bears on bait, I've learned that bears will key in on a food source and stay there until it is exhausted or a better food source becomes available. And the practical application of that would be if a, if a bear finds a white oak flat that's dropping acorns, he's got no reason to go anywhere else, and he pretty much will not unless he's pushed out by you know rival animals or he's spooked out by you, which is possible. But I learned this by hunting over bait. I mean, a bear will absolutely camp out on a bear bait and stay there. And uh, they bed close to their food source. They utilize the food source at all hours of the day. And that is no joke. Um, as white-tailed deer hunters, we're often keyed into this idea that hot weather is bad, cold weather is good. It's actually exact opposite for black bear. It, it doesn't even make sense. You probably think I'm lying right now. Bears prefer it to be hot, man. They're, you you got to remember, they're on, a different, they're on a different cycle than us. When it gets cold, they go to sleep. When, uh, when it's hot, it's time for them to gather groceries so that they can go to sleep when it gets cold. If it were opening day in Arkansas, I'd rather it be 90 degrees than 70 degrees. You may think I'm joking, but I'm not. We see that on our bait sites, that activity increases as it gets hotter. I don't understand it. It doesn't even make sense. Bears have such thick hide and, and hair, you would feel like they'd get hot. Um, this is totally anecdotal, but we see this on baits and it, it, I'm, they, they utilize these baits just like they utilize natural food, but they seem to be on a 10 to 14 day cycle of changing food sources. So even, even if the food source were to remain constant, which most natural food sources will not remain constant for that long, uh, or well, that's about their, that's about the duration in one single spot if bears were just pounding it, they seem to want to change. That's relevant to you because if you find old bear sign, you may get pumped up, but old bear sign is irrelevant because he's somewhere else. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, so we're talking about how to hunt. Uh, they leave a lot of sign. So the key to my hunting, and this is the, here's your, uh, here's your, here's your sound bite. Um, the key to my hunting is finding fresh bear scat and food. That's it. And here's my advice for how you can find it. Walk until you find it. Yep. You heard it. It's that simple. Remember, you got to be mentally tough. Remember, you can't be validated by seeing game. Remember, you can't be validated by finding sign. You got to walk until you find it. And when you find it, you'll know it. So the key to my hunting is finding fresh bear scat and food. Walk until you find it and don't settle for anything less. And you'll learn a ton on your journey. I've walked more in these mountains and ridden my mule in these mountains more than I ever would if I was deer hunting. Um, and uh, basically, you're looking for that smoking hot place that that bear is. And, and I've written here, two-week-old bear scat isn't that valuable. You may find stuff. You may find you know, bear scat that is old and maybe a lot of it. And you might get excited and want to hunt there. I I'd move on until I found fresh scat. So two week old bear scat, isn't that valuable? Bear scat made yesterday is super valuable. That's what I'm looking for. Smoking hot bear scat. And the, the, the crazy thing is, is that, uh, let's say you've got a week to hunt you may not find a single drop of bear scat until the fourth day. Most of my hunting has been just like that, is that even places that have been good in years past may not be good the year that you're hunting. And that's why it's a tough hunt mentally, because you're not, you may not be finding sign. You go to a different area, may not find sign. Go to a different area, may not find sign. You got to remember these bears have these big home ranges. These bears are low density animals. And uh, you just have to keep pounding the mountain. But when you find it, you're going to know. And, uh, you know, to me, uh, if I had a white oak flat that was 
two, let's say it was two acres. I'm just making this up. If I saw 10 piles of bear scat in that two acres that was fresh within the next, the, the, you know, the last couple of days, I could sit there and kill a bear. It may take you two, it may take you two days. Um, sometimes you'll find stuff even more concentrated than that. Okay. Other thing, how to hunt bears, water. Uh, if you've seen any of my videos, you've seen me take bears over water. Uh, the bear I killed last year was, y y you wouldn't have seen it because the bear wasn't standing over water when I shot it, but that bear was coming to water. Um, in many places, water is not a limiting resource. And so in that case, water is not a big deal. If you've had a super wet fall, it doesn't matter. Uh, they can, they just assume drink water out of a mud hole as they would a fast flowing crystal cl clear stream, you know, so they don't, they don't care where they get their water. Um, but a lot of times we have these dry falls and, uh, and you'll find seeps, you'll find springs, you'll find forest service ponds, you'll find dry Creek beds that are dry for quarter mile that way and dry for a quarter mile that way. And there's white Oaks dropping up here and you'll find some fresh tracks around a little pool of water, about as big as a car hood and, uh, you know, put up a trail camera or, or just hunt it. And, uh, I've, I've killed, uh, several bears. Oh, well, maybe not several couple of bears over water. It can be good. Uh, but it's difficult. Um, okay. How to hunt bears. How do you find them? Bears prefer seclusion in the form of large blocks of unfragmented timber away from people, roads, and disturbance. Start with the biggest blocks of timber in known bear range, and that's where I'd go. Biggest blocks of timber you got. Get in there and, and just start learning the terrain. Use these features that I'm talking about and walk. And uh, again, the, the, the main key, though, to find out where they're going to be is this harvest data research by the county, WMA, or zone. That's where you start. It's that simple. Uh, there's no substitute for covering ground while looking for bear sign. I, and listen to this. This is, you know, some people don't understand this. I don't scout much before season. Now, I'm also hunting areas that I'm very familiar with. But, okay, I'm going to read this. I don't scout a lot before season, but mainly I scout during the season while I'm carrying a weapon ready to hunt. Many of the bears I've killed have been on the first trip on the first day that I found good sign, if that makes sense. So I go into an area with my bow, with my gear, with whatever, you know, I need to kill a bear. And I'm walking into the total unknown. I'd I hadn't been in there this year. The bear that I killed in 2019, now, I knew where I was going, but I hadn't been in there this year. And man, when I got up there, I started finding bear scat. I started finding acorns. And man, I knew that I was in the chips. And I killed a bear two hours later off the ground. You'll see that tomorrow or a couple of days from now in the film festival. Uh, that's the hunt. So if you if you see that, you can you'll know that's that's the hunt I'm talking about. I hadn't even been in there. Um, so a lot of times your first time in is when you're going to kill a bear or you're going to bump into a bear while you're slipping around, while you're moving, while you're covering sign. And you got to, you know, you, you got to be a good hunter. You got to be thinking about wind direction. You know, you're not going to want to walk with the wind hitting you in the back of the neck, blowing out everything in front of you. I mean, you kind of plan for these things. Typically prevailing winds are going to be pretty consistent and you can say, okay, well, I'm going to be walking in a, I'm going to walk out of the South into the North, you know, if the wind's coming from a certain way. Already told this story, but the first bear I killed on purpose in the National Forest, I, I hiked about 33 miles before I found huntable bear sign. That day, it was the last day of the Arkansas bear season. I had found next to nothing, and uh, I went into a totally new area, found a smoking hot pile of bear sign or bear scat, and uh, about three hours later, I was standing over a bear that I killed. Uh, killing a bear once you find him is the easy part. Finding the bear is the hard part. That's the hard part. Uh, how do you hunt a bear? Once you've found fresh sign in the feeding area, you, you, you want to find food present. You, you, cause you might find a bunch of old bear sign, but there's no new white, you know, there's no white oak acorns on the ground. There's, you know, the food source has been used up. So they've moved on, but you just got to use common sense, just like you would if you were hunting whitetails. Hunt only with a favorable wind. These bears, they will absolutely 
they have incredible noses and you you'll blow them all out of the country if they if they smell you hunt only a favorable wind watch entry and exit routes best you can uh hunt morning and evenings just like you do deer but i mainly do all day hunts when i'm on good bear sign i've i've killed bears at 10 a.m at 12 noon and at 3 p.m uh remember that fall hyperphagy is uh means that these bears are feeding a lot and so I mean, there's no bad time to kill a bear during the day. That's very different than deer. You're going to be out there and it's going to be 85 degrees on October 1st and you're going to be sweating. And you're going to be thinking, golly, what am I doing? And uh, that's probably the day you're going to kill a bear. Um, let's see. I'm going to skip that one. Let's see. Slip hunting. This is the way I like to hunt. I hunt off the ground slowly, walking covering ground especially if the sign isn't ultra concentrated uh, i like to hunt off the ground so that i can move like last year the bear that i killed um the bear sign was just kind of scattered out all across this flat and i didn't know if the bear was going to be 20 yards away or if he was going to be 50 yards away i just knew he was going to be there so i if i'd have hunted out of a tree stand i, I couldn't have done i couldn't have done that good um so I, I just scratched out a spot on the ground uh, and and sat there. And uh, when the bear came in, I was able to turn around. And I actually didn't need to move. He came in pretty close. But uh, these bears are very stalkable. And you can move on them if they don't smell you. But you can hunt out of a tree stand. I know a lot of guys that hunt bears out of tree stands like this. Like if they find if they think they know right where a bear is going to be, sure your scent's going to be up off the ground. There's some advantages to being in a, in a tree, and uh, that's important stuff. So don't be invalidated by lack of success. This is my last slide. Then I'm going to go back to my rant for one final rant. Um, don't be invalidated by lack of success or lack of finding sign. Keep searching until you find it, and when you do, you'll know it. Okay. All right. Hey, I'm going to go back to my rant because, um, you know, the way that I describe the sheep hunt of the South is I, I and, and I don't really like the way I describe it sometimes because I say hunting bears in the Eastern deciduous forest without the use of bait or hounds, as if there's something wrong with using bait or hounds. And, uh, you're talking to the wrong guy. If you, uh, if you don't want to hear an earful about why bait and hounds are a good thing and why as hunters we need to be stacking around all legal methods of hunting in 2020 and sticking together. Despite the romantic notions and noble intentions of the pure steel or spot and stalk hunter, what we're talking about, what I'm talking about, I call those romantic notions, noble intentions of hunting a bear in this pristine way on his own turf. Hunting bears over bait and using hounds is in many ways more ethical in the truest sense of the word. You have to, I'll have to explain that to you maybe. Um, because bait and hounds allow a hunter to be highly selective. The least selective hunting that Clay Newcomb does when it comes to a black bear is when I'm hunting like when I'm hunting spot and stalk in the national forest. I'm not selective at all. I am looking for an adult bear without cubs. And if I kill a, a younger bear, I am thrilled. Well, when I'm hunting over bait, I am absolutely targeting older mature males. And older mature males are typically, in most management programs, the type of animal that we want to be taking out of the population. And guys, I hope you know that I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of being tongue in cheek here. I just didn't want people. I don't want people to think that hunting over bait or hunting with hounds is some somehow unethical because you know bait and hounds allows a hunter to be highly selective it allows the hunter to engineer the shot angle efficiently and bait and hounds are used by bear managers as legitimate and predictable tools for bear harvest okay hey these tennessee georgia uh well georgia georgia's a different story in Arkansas, we can't harvest the number of bears that we need to harvest hunting this way. We tried. We can't do it. Uh, we needed bear hunting. We needed bear baiting on private land to allow bow hunters to harvest these animals, and it's a good thing. Um, 
So still and spot and stalk hunting is the least selective type of hunting that I do. And, uh, and, and the, one of the top bear biologists in the country told me this, uh, uh, Randy cross up in Maine is that he told me that when, when I go kill a bear up in national forest in Arkansas, a bear doing what it's supposed to be doing, that actually I'm selecting for a very good bear that is not near human populations, that is not getting into any trouble. And when you're harvesting bears on private land over bait, you're actually drawing in the bears that are going to be the problem bears and taking those bears out. So he said that we're actually taking the good bears. And he is a proponent for baiting as a way to, uh, to take out some of the bears that will be problem bears. And spot and stalk hunting, shot selection is difficult. I hope you guys understand what I'm doing here uh, because of this right here. It's more important than ever, more important than ever for the hunting community to unite on all legal methods of hunting. You don't have to do it, but it's in your best interest. If you love North American hunting culture and want to see the, the whole of North American hunting culture passed down to, to respect and support all legal methods of hunting. If it was 1900, there's probably some riffraff in the wildlife management that needs to be cut out. In 2020, after 120 years of the North American model of wildlife conservation, chipping away in science and research and public opinion, if there is something legal today, it has gone through the gamut and has proven to be legit. And so that's why I say, I really feel like we need to unite on all legal methods. You don't have to do it. Not everybody wants to kill a bear over bait. Not everybody wants to kill a bear over hounds. That's totally cool. But we've got to, as I, as we like to say, we got to guard the gate. Bear hunting is the gateway for the anti-hunting community to come into our space. They're not trying to get the elk hunters, the deer hunters, the quail hunters, the squirrel hunters, the rabbit hunters. They are trying to come in after bear hunters, mountain lion hunters. We're the gate. If we have a strong, powerful, intelligent, robust, passionate narrative that's backed by science, that's backed by good reason, that's backed by sustainable harvest, that's backed by uh, 100 years of conservation that's causing our predator numbers to increase, then we have a, we have a chance to continue on and, uh, and, and, and let these great traditions, this sustainable harvest of these incredible animals to continue because bear hunters are the good guys. We're the good guys. And, uh, we just got to unite, create a powerful narrative and live it, live it. Um, all right, guys, that's, that is what I've got. Um, let's go to some questions here. Uh, let's see. Nope. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, my screen. Let's see. What's the most dangerous bear? Let's see. Okay, I've got a question here. The most dangerous bear hunt you've ever done? I've I've hunted. Uh, I've been to Alaska twice on brown bear hunts. I, those probably would be the most dangerous that I've done, just because you're on the ground with uh, with some true carnivores that want to eat you. Um, black bears are not that dangerous, really. I've had a few close scraps with them, but nothing too serious. Um, any tips for hunting the West, man? You need to listen to our podcast. We talk a lot about hunting the West. Um, you know, this conversation is more geared towards the East. Let's see any tips to prevent spooking a bear. What's the most, what's more like the scent, man, a bear doesn't care what you look like. He's not even as concerned about sound. Scent is everything with a bear. Do bears like swamps bears in the, in the low country of North Carolina, South Carolina, the, the dismal swamp there in, uh, the Virginia's. Oh yeah. Swamps are big time bear country. If you don't have a flashy mule, how do you get a bear out of the deep woods? Man, you're just out of luck, brother. Nick Hart. The answer is you need a flashy mule. Um, now nah, you can quarter up a bear. You know I mean? You're probably not going to kill a 500 pound bear. You're probably going to kill a 175, 225 pound bear. Quarter that thing out. You can have them out in two trips, or if you got a buddy, you can have them out in one trip. Uh, success in calling bear. Yeah. I've never called bears in in the east. Typically, 
The Western bears are a little bit more distressed for food and they respond more to calling. Eastern bears typically don't really respond to calls that much, especially in the fall because there's so much mast. It's like there's so there's so much food. It's like, why am I even going to go over to this, you know, squalling rabbit? So calling success in the east, I have not had much success with it. Uh, first time bear baiter in Idaho. Man, listen to the uh, Baiting Bears for Dummies podcast uh, for bear, uh, the Bear Hunting Magazine podcast. We nerd out on it. Um, why are black bears at West different colors? One's East tend to be black. Yep. So there's multiple color phases of black bears in North America. There's lots of different uh, biological, you know, theories of why a lot of it has to do with, or, you know, the correlation of canopy cover, you know, the less canopy, the lighter the bears are, the thicker the canopy, the darker the bears are. You get on the East coast, almost 0% color phase. You get into Arkansas and Oklahoma, you have about 15, 20% color phase. As it transitions into the prairie, into the Rocky Mountain West, you get places in Colorado where it's about 80% color phase. Um, let's see. When scouting searches for, for, for sign, is it best to stick to the high ridges? I like to hunt high because you have a very hard time in the mountains hunting low and controlling your, controlling your scent. Uh, higher up on the mountain typically you're going to have winds that you can predict so i stay out of the low stuff i don't I, you didn't hear me talking about like killing bears on or you know hunting bears on creek systems and stuff typically i'm up on the ridges um let's see cut another question about color phase no it's not minerals it's all just biology how dense are the woods in the south and southeast okay every place i'm hunting if i can see 50 yards i feel like i am at a massive vista i mean we're we're talking about these woods are thick um some places you know i might see 75 yards but i mean most places i'm hunting 30 yards would be maximum shot distance and i think that would be true for a lot of places in georgia tennessee um we use our success with black bears as a way to open up grizzly hunting in the lower 48 that's a good question man the grizzly is such a politically loaded question uh that's a tough one that's a tough one. It's it, it's it really is two different animals. Uh, even though I'm I'm in support of of a uh, of a quota, I'm in support of hunter management. It just makes sense. Um, but it's a, that's a tough one right there. Let's see. Um, Brad Green over bait. Is it best to hunt sun up to sun down? Seems like guys a lot of guys are hunting afternoon and evening. Um, Brad, if I'm if I'm after a big bear. That is uh, that I just know is super smart and going to be hard to kill. I don't try to go in in the morning because he's going to already be there while you're trying to slip in in the dark, and you'll bust him out. The best bear hunters I, that I know, um, oh, hunting over bait, I'm talking about, are primarily hunting in the evenings, and that's the way I hunt. Um, just out of there, how much of these bears? Maybe? Zach O'Connor, man, your bears, if you're finding bear sign, the bears are there. You just got to be there. Is it holler or hollow? Uh, Seth, Trokey, I'm a holla man. Uh, I usually, I usually, uh, I, I, I find myself not saying holler, but holla. So take that with, for what it is. Uh, let's see. How long do cubs stay with the sows? So cubs are born, man, black bear breeding biology is absolutely incredible. Black bears are bred in the summer. They have this biological process called delayed implantation. So an egg is fertilized in the summer, but that egg doesn't attach to the uterine wall and begin gestation until that sow has all, gone all the way through the fall and her body decides if she's heavy enough if she has enough energy to to rear cubs and uh, and at that time in november her body decides yes we can rear cubs the fertilized egg attaches to the uterine wall gestation begins gestation 60 days and bear bears are born hairless in the den in january and they stay with their mama basically for like 16 months 18 months year and a half they den with her two times Let's see. 
click on the ask a question tab to the left. Yeah, that's where I'm at, brother. Um, you talk about shop placement, man. Hey, we've got a, we've got a pod. I, I'm not trying to promote our podcast, but I mean, we talked about shop placement for an hour and a half with some great bear hunters. Uh, check out our podcast shot. I think it's called shop placement for dummies. Um, we nerd out about shot placement. It is different than deer. It is. It's different than deer. Um, what caliber man, most of your deer hunting calibers are going to be big enough for black bear. It's all about shot placement, tick prevention strategy, dogs and humans. Um, it's a good question. Oh, I don't even know what I use on my dogs, but I just, I just, uh, dip them. They stay good. And I dip myself with the same stuff. Just, you know, the little, I'm kidding. I don't, I don't put that on me. Um, Let's see. Best place east of the Mississippi to go in the first bear hunt. North Georgia. That's where I'd go. North Georgia. Um, BHA folks, I'm glad to keep answering these questions. We've gone about an hour. So y'all take over wherever you want. Uh, I guess until I see somebody tell me to stop, I'll just keep answering some of these questions. How do you convince hunters and non-hunters alike that bear hunting is both a viable management tool and that's a that it is in fact okay to do it. Seems like people get their knickers in a twist. I like that when you tell them you're going on a bear hunt. Man, that is classic uh charismatic megafauna issues. I mean, you live in a glass house if you can eat a beef cow and you don't, you know, you you're opposed to eating bear meat. Um you live in a glass house if you're opposed to you know bear hunting, but you're whitetail deer hunting i mean these are game animals they're they're animals that we utilize their commodities I, i've been saying this and i think it's it was true we utilize more of a bear than almost other any other big game animal that we hunt we tan their hides how many elk hides do you have tan in your house how many deer hides do you have tan probably not any but if you killed a bear you got a tan bear hide we can render their fat that's something a lot of people are doing these days how many, you know, do you render the fat of your elk? Do you render the fat of your deer? No, bear you can, and then we eat their meat. So we're utilizing all of this animal. And I think that's a strong point for the utilitarian usage of these animals. But Ben. What's up, man? Uh, keep going. Okay. Get to give me one more, one more good one. One more. Uh, I'm trying to find a good one here. Okay, th this is a good one. Uh, prime time for the time frame. For several years, I felt like late fall was the time to kill a bear. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time hunting the last 15 days of November. And then I actually had a buddy of mine in Georgia, uh, Stephen Patton. He, he just said, man, you ought to hunt those bears early. And uh, when he said that, it kind of clicked for me. And um, early the earlier the better. If you can hunt like in some of the some of the states like in north georgia usually season opens in mid-september even to early september and man earlier the better don't worry about it being hot um the bears are super active bears are making a lot of sign so i would much rather hunt early rather than late all right man thanks so much i appreciate it guard the gate everybody loves guard the gate I love it. I would, I would, there's no one in the world. I would rather hear talk about that subject than you. So thanks for everything. Thanks for going through everything I need to know. And all these people need to know about bear hunting. Uh, we gotta, we gotta announce some, uh, winners, man. We gotta uh -huh. announce the winners of our first light giveaway. I'm gonna pull your names up here right now, everybody. So we got three winners. You're going to get a first light wick hoodie. And a mm. hat, a trucker hat. And thank you again to our folks at First Light. The three winners are Adam Kitchen, Dan Adam Fuchs. Kitchen. Adam Kitchen. Easy to pronounce. Dan Fuchs, F-U-C-H-S. Matthew Clay. So congratulations right. to Adam, Dan, and Matthew. So these guys are on here right now, Ben. Is that right? I'm hoping so, yep. I'm hoping they're yep. on here. They can tell us. Um they're on here. We can see the comments over there. If you guys are here, congratulations again. 
Great information, man. Thank you so much, Clay, for being who you are. Thanks to First Light for helping us put this on and being a great Platinum Plus partner. You guys, make sure you follow us. We're going to jump over right now to the uh, Stubble Field versus the Field Challenge. Hey, Ben, yeah. I got to say one thing, though, yeah, real buddy. quick. Just real quick. Ty Stubblefield doesn't stand a chance <laughs> Thursday night. I was skidding squirrels while his mama was still wiping his nose. Damn right. The only thing that could take this from me is if this thing was rigged. <laughs> we might rig it. You never know. You never know. Tonight is Remy Warren. You, are you gonna Are you gonna take Remy Warren shooting five arrows uh, and running thirty yards at a time over Ty Stubblefield? Oh wow, wow. We may tire him out, Ooh. man. We may tire him out. I don't even know who to go on that one. I I don't think Subfield's going to win any of this. I think he goes <laughs> 0 for 5. I think he goes 0 for 5. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, so, hey, man, I really, again, really appreciate it. Thankful for you taking the time to help us out here at BHA from, from a North American board member to you. Thank you so much for being a part you bet, My of pleasure. what we do. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, everybody. We will see you uh, in the Stubblefield room. Come hang.